Between aging and busy lifestyles, many women struggle with maintaining their physical and mental wellness. At Aquavita Concierge Healthcare Services for Women, we can help you revitalize your health and reclaim your life. We start from within by balancing your hormones, allowing your body to achieve and maintain desired weight goals. We also specialize in peptide therapies, regenerative medicine, sexual health, and aesthetics in our state-of-the-art facilities. Feel better, look better, live better. At Aquavita, visit aquavitality.com and begin your journey today. Hey, these new strings work like a charm. Soon enough, we'll be making some real rhythm and some lead cuts this time. Should be fun. And, um, hmm, you know, I love heavy traffic. Not real life heavy traffic. Hell no, I can't stand that. But, no, the animated movie heavy traffic. Beautiful stuff. Like the artwork, the story, everything about it just really resonates to me. I guess that's my way of being a filmmaker and all. So shout out to Ralph Bakshi for this. Did a damn fine job with Fritz the Cat, too. And, you know, speaking of which, I know I said I was going to be here around 11 o'clock, but then again, you got to figure, it's only 19 after 10, I think, so uh, might as well go ahead and kick everything off to a good hitch. And by the way, no ads, I'm paying. Welcome to the J-Man Show here on J360 Radio! Between aging and busy lifestyles, many women struggle with maintaining their physical and mental wellness. At Aquavita Concierge Healthcare Services for Women, we can help you revitalize your health and reclaim your life. We start from within by balancing your hormones, allowing your body to achieve and maintain desired weight goals. We also specialize in peptide therapies, regenerative medicine, sexual health, and aesthetics in our state-of-the-art facilities. Feel better, look better, live better. At Aquavita, visit aquavitality.com and begin your journey today. With Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey, what's going on, J360 Legion? How are you all doing tonight? Welcome to the J-Man Show for episode 253. Ha! Double special time, right? Yeah, feels good to be here. Uh, yeah, I know I'm a little late and all that jazz, but hey, I had to do a 30-minute set of reps, you know? I gotta go ahead and do what I gotta do to... You know, work on me. <laughs> and uh, I gotta say, I'm doing quite a lot, but it's all for a good cause. And not to mention, uh, yeah, I have my reasons. So, you know, just going ahead and working it all out. Meanwhile, though, I was watching Heavy Traffic, and um, yeah, it's still a crown jewel in my animation collection. See, I have animation made it stuff for like when I grew up as a kid. And I have like a huge collection of that in addition to some things I didn't get to see until I was much older. And I also have an adult animation um, section. No, it's not hentai. Sheesh. You know? But damn close because it's Ralph Bakshi on it. But you see, the thing is, like like I said before, the story is what matters and the way that things are drawn, the rotoscoping. And like that's what I get out of it. I don't get like all the other thing that broke people out in hives about it. Like I actually do have a copy of his movie coonskin which uh believe it or not once you get past like what everybody was outraged about there's a beautiful story about surviving the inner city and going through a time of racial strife and all sorts of breaking stereotypes that's what it was about and like as i sit there and i watch it i mean sure the designs are profound but the caricatures can kind of turn off people but, you know, it's just the story underneath of it. Not to mention, like, how Harlem rose to become a superpower within its own and then all the money that came in it and how the mob was jealous about it. Like, that all played a role in that. And I was like, wow, you know? Blows me away every time. And then I got to see the part where, like, certain people who were highly influential in the black community, right, were sponging off the black community and not doing a damn thing for them. Like, that still happens today. And you can go ahead and say, like, which in which way or who's doing it now. And you pretty much can tell if you pay attention. 
But yeah, like all this stuff is true to form, and it's slowly but surely coming back in a weird way. That's why I was actually taking the time to watch it to see, like, you know, how relevant this still is. And believe it or not, it, it pretty much is. Along with Heavy Traffic. Heavy Traffic is very, very, very good. But, you know, as I talk about those recommendations, I'm like, you know, where are some of our stuff that we speak about, you know? Not like Pixar, where it really picks at your feels. And not like some of those Disney movies that you don't watch. I mean, like... Where are those, like, independent animated features, you know? Like, the ones that are not on, like, the the festival, like, train and stuff like that. The movies that you should watch that really presents a pretty good story. Because animation is not just for kids. It's for everybody. Now, I know some of you guys watch the direct-to-DVD kind of films. Like, you've seen that Mortal Kombat Scorpion movie. Like, you've seen, like, um... One of my one of my top favorites would be like Dante's Inferno movie because it was different art forms telling the same story of the video game of the same name, which is a remake of the actual story of the same name. But they go with that one because it's the most popular. But I will say this, like, I, I like that. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, this needs to have a wider appeal, a wider audience to it, because those that usually jump in are the ones that are in on the niche of it. You get my drift? But, of course, you know, it's not saying that certain companies aren't sponging off of trying to get certain animations over here. Uh, <clears throat> Netflix. But, you know, oh, by the way, are you guys still in love with Netflix or are we still hating Netflix? Like, what, what's, what's the relationship with that now? <laughs> I mean, like, I, I don't know who's in charge of the marketing or who's in charge of enforcement of some of these rules that these streaming networks are putting out. But they're getting really, really ridiculous and reckless with it. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't enjoy these things. I'm just saying, like, really pay attention to them because, like, I guess they're so afraid of losing subscribers that they go in the process of losing subscribers. So instead of just writing the ship and saying, hey, you know, we're sorry for what we did. We were a little overzealous. No, we're just going to go ahead and keep drilling holes in our own ship, right? Because, hey, it's not like we're a viable market or the only one anymore. Man, I, I miss the old days of streaming sometimes because it was fun. You know, it was open. It was, you know, everything you could enjoy. Now it's like everybody has one, VPN this, and then, of course, you know, oh, I'm going to leave because they canceled my show or, you know, something is not, not on there anymore because of licensing issues, and then things just get delisted. But, you know, once again, it's still one of those things where, you know, you can watch certain animations and all. Now, keep in mind, when I say animation, I'm not talking about anime. Japanese anime is great. Don't get me wrong. It is phenomenal. But I look over here at Western animation. Like, remember a long time ago, like, with Looney Tunes and all that stuff? Like, yeah, we get them, but at the same time, they're not as cutting edge as they used to be, per se. Like, ah, oh, man. Like, like, looking at some of those wartime cartoons for just... Fun, just blows me away all the time. Like, I was sitting there watching that, too. I was like... Yeah, this will never be on TV again. <laughs> but, you know, I was like, they had something to say when they did it. You get my drift? And then, of course, you know, there are other people out there on YouTube channels alike, independent creators like your, yours truly here, that actually do work on their stuff. I, I believe I know a few of them. I should go ahead and drop their names in the description box. And I'll give me some time to do that, because, like, right now, I'm just really, really thinking, like... We need to have that again. And then the thing is, while we have that, we need to have some support behind it. I mean, a lot of y'all want to be voice actors anyway. I've seen more people now say, Oh, I want to go into voice acting and all that stuff. Yeah, I want to be a voice actor. Uh, uh, uh. Did you sign up? Did you go to backstage? Did you do what you needed to do to make and chase that dream? Or are you just doing it because you think, Oh, I have a successful podcast. I can just segue into that. You get what I'm saying? It's just interesting how people will do this and think, oh, yeah, because that is a marketable income right there. And I'm not saying that it isn't, but, you know, you want to like and love what you do. Some of you don't even want to edit your own damn show. So how much love for these things do you really have before you go bogarting into other people's um, ideas and directions on things? Just saying. But you know what? If you're really about the craft and you're really going to put the hard work in and you're going to be sitting there with a big bottle of water and just go ahead and guzzle that down in between takes, then you know what? Let's go ahead and go to work then. Let's make it happen. I'd like to see more of that. I mean, I think, what, the last mainstream major adult animation was what? Sausage Party by Seth Rogen? 
You know, the the guy that people don't want to play Donkey Kong? Yeah. As I think about that for a little bit, I'm like, hmm, you know, if he can make that thing, any of us could. And I think with a little bit of crowdfunding, we could actually get that stuff promoted well. And then you need to find a pretty good distributor for it and make sure everybody's on the same page about going through the process. And as I sit here and think about it, it would be fun. Because I would really like to work on an animated feature. I really would. It would be great. And, of course, you know, as I say this, make it gritty. Make it raw. Make it fun. And before some of you say, what about DC animation? See, that's good, too. That's a good example. But once again, the ones that know about it are the ones that are in the mix. Everybody else cares about live action. You know? Now, animation is a pretty viable medium when you know how to use it. And as I sit here and I look at, um, you know, I look at all this stuff, like even Fritz the Cat, I'm not ashamed to say I own Fritz the Cat. I'm not ashamed to say I even own the sequel, which wasn't as good as the first one because, you know, they took three years of the 70s, whereas, like, with the original Fritz the Cat, that pretty much covered all the 60s. So, um, you know, that's why it had a story all its own. And a lot of, a lot of wild things were happening in the 60s, but then again, you know, if I wanted to go ahead and tell you about the 60s, I'd have my dad go ahead and host this show instead of me coming up telling you things. Hey, Father's Day's coming up, why not? I take a rain check and let my pops, and we'll go ahead and broadcast from his house. That would be fun. But, you know, <laughs> tell you about all sorts of things. Ooh, man, he helped shape me to be the legend before you all. Mm-hmm. And then the family curse took over at 35 and really made me insane. Well, actually, no, that's the maternal family curse. The paternal doesn't come in until I'm about 70, and, like, things really get weird. Yeah, 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 that, that's what he told me. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah. By the way, thanks, Mom. See about getting you something for uh, next month. Which, which is, by the way, it's going to sneak up on you fast, so I might as well go ahead and say it. But, uh, you know, show a little respect to your mom. Get your mom something, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, we all got that wild stuff that's going on. If you are a parent of so, you know what I mean? Remind the youngers to respect you for being who you are, especially if you're motherly. You know what I mean? Not like those uh, crazy-ass hockey moms, but still, they're included too because that's all they ever talk about, especially when you hold them to task for things. But you know my drift. Sometimes they do crazy stuff because they want us to be better, and then sometimes they do crazy stuff because they're just batshit crazy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know, but you see, the thing is, it's late in the night, and I'm just unwinding and talking to you guys right now. Yeah, so I was sitting there thinking about this. I was like, if this is a grand undertaking for this, you need everybody to work together on it. We need to have, like, characters that play a role, not just for the sexy funness, but, you know, for, like, some of the humor and some of the things to say, the satire, the statements and all. That would be wild. And there are, like, independent animations out here. And they do tell, like, certain stories, like, you know, like how social media can be a drag and all. Like, I remember seeing this one where this person had, like, a lot of followers. And those people, while not really there, they were there and they were following her everywhere. And she got to the point where she was overwhelmed by it. So she started deleting the followers down. Even though, like, she went down to, like, one follower who was really nice to her and all that stuff, but... She didn't want to be in the rat race anymore, so she deleted that person also. And then, you know, things got quiet, everything got calmer, and then, you know, she went about her merry way. I thought that was a pretty good storytelling about, like, you know, sometimes it can get overwhelming. Sometimes, like, when you have a huge follower fan base, it can really eat you alive because you don't know exactly how to please or probably pander to that fan base. Which, um, unlike me, oh yeah, I always got something for y'all. <laughs> but it's true though see some people don't know how to handle it and they break apart at, at the pressure and all that kind of stuff i mean i'm sure you've all seen it like case studies of like top youtubers and top um podcasters that somehow go insane at the eve of their next big debut and they don't know how to act and they just cripple up and go ahead and tell you all this other stuff about their life that you really don't need to know and it's just the meltdown, baby! The meltdown! And I'm not trying to make fun of them entirely. What I'm saying is, is that that could happen to anybody. Especially if they're not mentally strong, and especially if, like, moment of weakness comes into play. Which is why I look at some people and it's like, you know what? 
sure, so and so might be a douche, and so and so might be self serving, and so and so like um, reeks of just being a fake. At the end of the day, you know, cut them some slack, leave them be. If they're not throwing stuff into your neighborhood, which, by the way, if they're not throwing stuff around here at J360 Radio, I have no reason to go to war with them. But if they even utter and try to throw that stank over here, believe me, I have a catapult ready, filled to the brim with plenty of cesspool delight to hit them in the face. And, you know, it's not a joke. It's just really true. <laughs> you know what I mean? I protect what's mine. But that's just how it goes, guys. I mean, like, you know, some people, like, to reach the top, they go through a lot and they have all these, you know, uh, what do you call it? Bad karma. See, it's moments like this where I need Al to come around to tell me, like, oh, Jay, you know, like, bad karma in the vibes. Not that he's a hippie or anything. He knows what he's talking about. But the crazy thing is, is, like, you know, he usually tells me these things. But I'll do my best. I have patience, somewhat. Uh, <laughs> you know, starting to become a strong suit, I guess. But, yeah, like, as I sit here and I was uh, going through, like, what I have, you know... The only one I really didn't care for in Bakshi's lineup would be Cool World. And the thing is, because, like, the original premise of Cool World would have been a lot better than what we got. What we got was just, hey, man, has sex with cartoon, cartoon becomes real, and um, the rest is filler. And that's because, I think, what was it? Was it Paramount that did this or something? Yeah, yeah. Really, really, really messed it up. The man didn't even make another animated feature until, like, um, a recent one he did. I, I forget the name of it, but the way he drew it, it was like, yeah, yeah, I, I would like to see that again, you know? he it, It's out. You gotta go to his website to get it, but, like, I got nothing but respect for the man and what he's made and stuff, but I realize, like... So somewhere along the line, people forgot to take animation serious as a medium, per se. Now, it's starting to change a little bit, though. Like, you know, a lot of y'all are like, yeah, Miles Morales, yeah, Enter the Spider-Verse, which got delayed until 2023, but it'll be okay, though. It'll be okay. We, we will get to this film. And actually, it's supposed to be a two-parter, right? So, hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this will be interesting. But, like, you know... I'm just thinking, like, we really need to um, get more into it. Like, you know what I mean? It needs to be on that level and not just be, like, dominated by Disney. I think Warner Brothers still has theirs, don't they? Don't they? No, I don't know. It's 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 a whole lot of questions in my head about that one. So I'm just like, hmm, where do we go from here? But then again, I'm like, yo, also, us independents need to come together and make some stuff happen. And then, while we do that, let's remember this. We need to have, like, some sort of a conch shell agreement or something like that. Like, something to really tie everybody so that everybody's on the same page and no one outweighs the other. Because I know how that stuff goes when you don't have agreements and all. It, it's just, it's insane. Like, you know, because there's always somebody out there with an axe to grind. There's always somebody with a giant ego. And there's always somebody with larger-than-life personality. Like, yours truly. So, sometimes that could either be the best mix ever like SOTA, or it could be the most chaotic mix ever, like SOTA. <laughs> nah, not like SOTA. There's a lot of other shows out there that you, you, you wonder how they're together, and at the same time you listen, and it's like, oh, this, 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 this sucks because of the people on it, you know? So it's little things like that. But, you know, I'm not trying to say, like, we don't have it. I'm just saying, because much like music, and I've said this on, like, jams and hangouts, a particular music genre isn't dead. You just have to go find it. Good music is all around you. You just have to seek it out. The market is there. And, you know, do we build up on it and do we enjoy it? Or do we just let it peter out on its own? I mean, it's like one of those kind of things that you think about from time to time. Like, everybody tries to say Synthwave is dead. I'm like, Synthwave is not dead because I don't see people stop making Synthwave. And I wouldn't want to see people to stop making Synthwave. I would like to see people continue to make their music while at the same time evolve and grow themselves. And not be ashamed or afraid of experimenting. Because, yeah, the ones that are there with you sometimes, they probably will not like your new material. But you know what? You made enough of your material to that point where, guess what? 
there's a place for them to go and like it. And then while you're experimenting and flexing that muscle, you're still making fresh content at the same time, like not being stagnant. Cause that's like the worst damn thing you could ever do as a creative, you know, it's kind of like, um, let's see for an example. Cause if I'm going to point fingers at something, I got to point fingers at self. So that's like me, um, eons in the future and all that kind of stuff just staying on spreaker instead of just being like you know what hey let's give youtube a chance hey let's go on ahead and do stuff on the uh, j360productions.com let's go on ahead and do those things you know what i'm saying if i stay stagnant then i'm not doing myself a favor and i'm um, being a franchise zombie or at the same time some of you guys are like oh well you know is he still over there well, you know yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, it is. It's just him. That's where he is. Now, the last thing you want to do is bore people, and the last thing you want to be at is a, um, is a captive and getting bored out of all sorts of things. You see my drift? So no, but yeah, like uh, looking at all this stuff here regarding my animation collection. Like, look, I even got the. Whoa, isn't that cute? I'm not on J360 TV, and I'm telling you to look. Like, I have uh, the Ralph Bakshi Lord of the Rings Part 1. There should have been a damn Part 2. Like, I don't know why distributors or, like, um, studios try to ruin this man for... Because he already has pretty good stuff. But in a way, I could go ahead and look past that. Not because of Return of the King's animation. No, that's, it's a good one, but no. Because um, Fire and Ice is the thing. That is a good one. Yes, I like that. Tigra. Mm hmm. My crew bikini princess running around. I mean, sure, she's got a barbarian boyfriend, and, and there's a dude on there with a, with a wolf on his head and stuff like that, and looking really, really badass. I can't think of the characters' names other than Tigra because I used to call it the Tigra movie growing up. Yep. You see, looking at things like that will make you a man, in addition to Jessica Rabbit. Oh, that's another art form, too. Isn't it something how, like, you know, that movie is still influential to this day, but things that try to copy the techniques from Who Framed Roger Rabbit tend to tank and suck. And it's usually because of bad word of mouth, because, like, when I was watching the Rocky and Bullwinkle movie, I love that movie. Like, that is actually one of my, um, you know, guilty pleasure films. And not to say, like, you know, because everybody thought it was bad. I was like, this is actually pretty inventive for its time. I had more of a problem with the Dudley Do-Right movie. And I love Brendan Fraser and Alfred Malonia and uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. I think they did pretty well in that. But it's like the, the movie just wasn't as fun as the cartoon was. But if they had, like, uh, hmm, I guess mixed and merged it maybe. But then again, I don't know. I don't know. Going back to Rocky and Bullwinkle, it works for that because would you really want to see somebody in a moose suit, you know, or or a uh, or a squirrel suit and all that kind of stuff? No, you would want to see like animated characters uh, walking around with live action and all. And like they made fun of it in addition to everything else. And those characters are legendary. So yeah, I'm totally okay with that movie. I gave it a pass. But yes, yes, yes. As I go about this, I'm like, hmm. Some of these things either get overlooked or they don't get marketed well. Which leads me to go ahead and start doing some film redemption soon. But uh, you better pay attention to that on J360 TV. Meanwhile, though. Meanwhile, though. Okay, so you guys have heard about like ads allegedly are coming to PlayStation and Xbox. Or they want to do it. You know, similar to like how you're playing mobile games and there's always... Knowing full well you didn't pay for the... Um, you know, you didn't pay for the pro package, so you always got, like, that ad floating around and stuff. Yeah. Well, you see, the thing about it is they're actually, while delving into this, they're going to do it on, like, free-to-play games. So there's no real cause for too much of an alarm, I guess, because I can imagine, like, you know, playing through, like, certain, uh, well, sports games are always going to have ads. That's just the way it is. That's how they make their money. Uh, as for, hmm. Let's see, a game like Halo or something, would there be, like, an ad right there? But then again, is Halo free to play? I mean, without Game Pass? I mean, is it? I wonder that sometimes, because there was a long time ago they used to do this with fighting games at one time, where you had the core fighters of something, and it was, like, Dead or Alive 5 where they did that, 
And it was like you had to pay for like the other characters and stuff because for a while there, that was their way of making money off of people. Be like, hey, yeah, you know, you like playing this game for free, right? Oh, uh, you want to play it a little bit longer? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you can do that, but you got to go ahead and buy the extra stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, you see, you didn't buy the whole retail version, but this is a way to bring you into something. And, you know, you liked it a little bit, so, uh, hey, if you like it that much, you should go ahead and buy it. See, little things like that. Of course, uh, a long time ago, they were like, well, you know, microtransactions are a problem. Yeah, we don't want that in our games. Ah, the hell with you, sir. Ah, I will not allow this. Uh, yeah, this is too much. I do not like capitalism. <laughs> oh, man. The conservative uh, voice, man. I love using it. But the thing is, is like, uh, yeah, a little bit more to this. I would say the executives that come up with this, it's ridiculous. I can understand it being for mobile gaming, but not for, like, you know, traditional gaming. And then at the same time, like, some of these ads probably don't even bother you guys anyway because it's on free-to-play games. Like, if anything, I can see it helping out maybe the independent crowd in terms of development, which is what they're pretty much trying to say. Oh, yeah, this is going to help out development. Like, like you know, the um, Microsoft and Sony are not going to take a cut from it. And why would they? They make money in other things outside of gaming, too. So it's like, you know, their gaming divisions are pretty much optional compared to a lot of things. So it's little things like that. Now, do I think it's a good idea? Hell no. I don't think it's a good idea at all. Will it help out independence? Well, there's going to be somebody that's going to be pocketing the money a little bit more than it's actually going to help people. And gaming has a lot of problems because while there were a lot of developers, they still have to go through the punishing rules of publishers, don't they? You know, And then if the game doesn't sell in the projected, chances are that development company it will be falling down <sighs> like, it never, like a pillar of sand. It was just going to go away. That's the thing. But of course, you know, considering how reckless the media is, they're going to go and say, hey, there's going to be ads in your games. There's not a damn thing you can do about it. <laughs> and how would you feel about that, right? You'd get a little annoyed. I know I made a picture about it on the gram the other day. And the executive who decided this can kiss my ass. And indeed, I say that about a lot of executives that come up with ideas that seem pretty pointless and not to mention, hmm, stupid. So, yeah, no, I'm not in a, behind this. I'm not a fan of it. As much as I like to see, like, independent gaming companies grow, and I'd like to see, like, more, you know, variety. Hell, we all would like to see more variety, wouldn't we? But it's like, yeah, that right there, dropping that kind of news, considering, like, you know, we're all still on the road to recovery. Not everybody has a PlayStation 5. Not everybody has a Series X. And then they got the nerve to talk about bringing out a PlayStation 5 Pro, which at the same time, I'm like, you know, I just got mine. And it feels pretty pro enough. Like, this, this can wait, right? And then, I think, I think somebody was making a prank when they did this. But, you know, they said that they ran out of shortage, they, they ran into shortages of PlayStation 6 stuff. And I'm like, yeah, right. I wouldn't be surprised if they were in the back going ahead and saying, you know what? Everything was a mess this time. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and push the next system at them. That'll work. Nah, it's a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because here, here's the thing. I can see it now. A lot of us be pulling our hair and be like, oh, you're going to do that kind of nonsense, right? And it's like, mm, nah, nah, nah. They ain't that crazy. Right? <laughs> nah, but, uh, you know, as much as I look at this kind of stuff, I'm trying to think of if we even had a gaming gen. Did we even have, like, the ninth generation of gaming, pretty much? Because if anything, you're seeing a lot of rehashes, you're seeing a lot of, oh, this is the fixed version of something, or you're seeing something that you spent like about 70 bucks for, and it only lasts like five hours, or you see something where you have to be directly connected to the internet in order to get the gist out of all of it. And then, of course, you know, the new tier system regarding, what, Project Spartacus, and then like, the new version of Game Pass that's supposed to be coming. Like, like, new game pass mm -hmm. yeah see see little things like that really cross my mind from time to time and then at the end of the day you wonder like what is the what is the um the big 
ROI for everything, especially for those of us as consumers, because we will happily buy this stuff, right? <laughs> like, ain't, ain't none of us going to sit back and be like, oh my god, that gaming contemplation right there, that, that got my attention, uh, I want to jump in there, yeah. oh my god, Sonic Frontiers is coming, oh, me are going to buy that, oh yeah. Indeed, get all sweated profusely. Very excited about these certain IPs that are coming. Yeah. Or like maybe an all new uh, Double Dragon or something. Or the next Dragon Ball game. Because there's going to be another one of those at all times. Or the next Call of Duty. Which, by the way, you know, as I was talking about the cold open, uh, you know, I refrain from Call of Duty Warzone not because of my game skills at Call of Duty. No, not, not by a long shot. I refrain from it because of the memory that I have on my stuff. And I'm like, you know, I'd like to, but I can't. I can't sacrifice the memory like that, man. I, I can't do it. It's just not in me. I ain't strong like that. But then I saw Godzilla show up in that trailer. And you know what? The bastards almost got me, too. Because I, I can't. I can't do it. I won't. No. Just say no. And look at, and you can't see this, but as I'm telling you that, I'm kind of scratching my neck like, you know, I'm quitting cold turkey. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a hard one for me, man. I, I, I can't. I can't do it. But if there was a Godzilla tournament fighter, on the other hand, like Godzilla Save the Earth, or like, you know, kind of like how that Godzilla game was for like PlayStation 4, which, you know, I own, and I should go ahead and pop that in. And I, uh, not only that, you can play as, like, 2014 Godzilla, so, yeah, I think I'm content. Yep, so, have your war zone, do what you do on it, have a good time, whatever it takes. I, I, I'm not going to the party, y'all. I'm, I'm not in the club at this point. Because I got other things to do. Not only that, the games that are coming. I, I told you guys about that last episode. That, that has my attention, you know? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, think about it. And even then, we had some new information on uh, Shredder's Revenge. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm tapped. That's just the way, you know? I got other things going on. Not to mention keeping this stuff afloat around, y'all. D -d 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 I keeps my money. At least until those games come out. <laughs> and not to mention, like, uh, Sonic Origins is coming. And that, I know. I know it, you know it. It's the same old, same old. But you see, I'm a Sonic fan, so you can kiss my ass. And I'm going to have my fun. So, once again, I kiss my ass. It's just like when the Mega Man games were coming out. Yeah, we all played these before growing up. But I wasn't going to let it pass, man. It's the Blue Bomber, baby. Got all that stuff all the way up to Mega Man 11. And then, like, uh, the Zero series. I'm content. And the Zero series are hard as F, man. I don't know if I'm power playing those. Then again, I probably will be because I know y'all need a laugh and it'd be fun to see me stumble through those, <laughs> stumble through those games. But you know what? In original series and X series, though, I'm a beast. Now, uh, so let's see. What else do I have for you all? <laughs> I don't even have a list, man. Nah, not tonight. But I will say, like, oh, also, you know, the Sixers are kicking some major ass, too. Go Sixers. Win it, baby. Bring the cup back to Philly. You know what? Yes. Before I get the hell out of the East Coast, I need to see that happen. I need to see that cup come back here. Go see Joel and Bede. Get the autographs from the whole squad. Stand there with them like I'm in the team. And then I can go. That would be fun. And then I can look at you all and say, yeah. Yeah. That's right. You can't step to me now. Because, yes, Philadelphia 76ers world champs world champs oh that feels so good man that's like money damn it that's money mm -mm -mm. you know so i can see that happening in a beautiful big way and you know what little things like that is why me and alan need to go ahead and work on a certain series and really follow it but hmm, i wonder if he's down with the timing i'll have to ask him sometime Oh, and speaking of me teaming up with people again, you get a Hangouts episode tomorrow, and you won't believe who my guest is. It is Summer Sleep, baby, and it's going to be an amazing episode. You will love this thing, not to mention, like, ah, oh, it was just a nice, phenomenal party. And you get to be a part of it tomorrow, since, you know, you're not getting a Jams episode this week. Next week, 
Oh, which reminds me, uh, those of you that are still on the cusp about whether you should submit your tracks to jams, yes, you should. Submit your two tracks because the deadline will be here before you know it. I told you guys that April was going to be gone, right? And I was totally right about that. April is out. May is on its way in. The tide has changed. Indeed. But I also want to let y'all know, uh, nothing but respect. And it's always good to host any of these series for you, especially the J-Man Show. You guys are fantastic, and it's time for me to get lost. But, you know, once again, hey, I care about the fans. So, peace on out, guys. This is J-Man signing off. Laters. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere And each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW group. Void or prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.